I was spending a summer in Montreal raising money for my tech startup and I heard a party from a rooftop and I was just completely alone so I started introducing myself, telling people about what I do and what I'm working on until this one girl said I should meet Thomas. And within five minutes we got to talking about how he was one of the only people in the world who had the permit to go climb the Great Pyramid of Giza. That's just one of those things that immediately makes you wonder who the hell is this guy? And where is he coming from? The same night that I met Amar, I immediately went straight to Matt and told him about this. I was working as a bartender and it was around two in the morning and Thomas comes up to me with the biggest smile on his face. He looks me in the eyes and he says, do you want to climb the Great Pyramid of Giza? And he's just so confused by what I'm talking about. <laughs> Dude, are you drunk? <laughs> What are you saying? Even the possibility of being able to climb the Great Pyramid of Giza felt just massively exciting. Even just being there to document Amar doing it was kind of like, felt like an insane journey to be a part of. This was something that is going to happen in three months. And I was telling everybody that I met. And that's why that came up in the conversation with Thomas. So we immediately just start talking about life and all sorts of different things. I tell him about what I'm doing, which is about to start a journey of doing 30 things I'd never done before in 30 days and make a video about it every single day. The idea was that Amar was just going to help us film because he clearly had more experience with cameras than we did. But pretty much within the first afternoon, it was very quickly felt that that was not what he should be doing. And Amar's role was definitely to be the, the dreamer. Any dream that you think is too crazy, he'll level it up and make it even crazier and be like, Nah, that's not big enough. It just elevated everything to make us believe in the impossible. And a lot of the things that we ended up saying we'd want to do, like meeting the Prime Minister of Canada at the time for a YouTube channel that had 800 subscribers felt ridiculous. <laughs> but we did it. You know, Helly Bungie with Will Smith. This is going to sound crazy, but what if we challenge Will Smith to Helly Bungie? Dude, come on. And then he did it. I mean, dreaming to climb the Great Pyramid of Giza is such a, such a ridiculous dream to have. It's a thing that nobody's ever done legally, so you really do wonder where that came from. But it just elevated everything to make us believe in the impossible. That was actually the first dream I remember having as a child. I remember being so in awe for how big they were. And in 2014, I spent 39 straight days showing up to different government offices every single day. And then it actually happened. My friend Oscar and I became the first people to ever get every single legal permission to be able to climb the Great Pyramid of Giza. But on the day of the climb, we actually got denied at the base. I had plans to make another attempt six months later, but little did I know, that summer the whole government just got shuffled and my paperwork was just useless. And in 2017, I ended up taking Matt and Thomas to Egypt for the first time to meet my family. And I had one last chance to make this dream come true. We're about to board the flight to go to Cairo. It's actually kind of surreal that we're about to see Amar's family that we've been talking about together for two years. We realized almost instantly, showing up in Egypt in 2017, that we were going to climb. It kind of felt like talking to a wall. We had a meeting earlier today and it was just a whole bunch of nothing. It got us, got us nowhere. That was my last chance to make the climb happen. 
I want to be out there one day and I made my attempts, got a permit and didn't end up happening but still hoping that one day it will. If ever we would have been able to climb the Great Pyramid of Giza, it would have been filled with government officials, just a mar going up and having to come down right away. It would have been this like crazy stressful official scenario that did not sound like something fun and adventurous. But I got a call from Perry. He had just been to Guatemala. He wouldn't stop talking about this guy, Pressy. And he wouldn't stop talking about the specific thing that Pressy told him, which was, I know how to get you to the biggest pyramid in the entire world. From the air, it looks like just jungle, but these forests in Guatemala hide an ancient secret. It didn't sound real, like the way he would explain it. It almost felt like, what? How is this not a bigger thing? The thing is, almost no one's heard of it. How does no one know about this? How I have never heard of this. Pyramid Levante is a structure the world should know because of it represents an investment of labor unprecedented in the world history. But it's accessible. And I think that was the most exciting part. It's like, no, no, you can go. You just have to be willing to take the risk. I hung up the phone and I freaking sprinted to Amar and Thomas's apartment. And I stopped everybody and I was like, Amar, we're gonna do it. And he's like, what the f are you talking about? And I just explained, I was like, the biggest pyramid of the world is not in Egypt. It's a common misconception. It's in Guatemala. As soon as I told them they were down, all we had to decide is who did we want to be there. The wildest thing about the La Danta Pyramid is that nobody has ever properly documented the process of actually going and seeing the pyramid. So because of that, we wanted to assemble some of the most talented creatives in the world to do the story justice. The first person we reached out to was Sam Calder. We've actually never worked with him before, but his travel cinematography is some of the most incredible we've ever seen. And his style of filmmaking has inspired thousands around the world. Along with Sam, Chelsea Yamase, his girlfriend, but also one of the most badass adventure photographers in the world. Then we had Andreas Hem, who's a red camera cinematography magician. This red camera is pretty much an extension of his body. We've worked with him in the past and he truly never misses a shot. Then we invited Johnny Cher, AKA Johnny FPV. He's a first person view freestyle drone operator and his work honestly just speaks for itself. Then we have Sorel Amor. She's a seasoned backpacker and adventurer who brings so much light and positivity that we could not have gone on this trip without her. Max Rance McDonald is a world traveler in Daredevil who came along with us on our last documentary, who always says yes to an adventure. And last but not least, our friend Perry Grone. He's a filmmaker, a comedian, who told us about La Danta in the first place and who actually came with us in 2017 to capture one of our attempts to climb the pyramid. And after a few months of phone calls and convincing, I, I guess we were somewhat ready to go. Waterproofing, waterproofing. Like little, little tarpy. Pouches. I feel like we're not in the right area for that. Mm. I promise they're super cool. <laughs> promise. Yeah. Yeah. You look perfect. You're all set. I think he's ready to go. Nobody has anything they're supposed to have. You guys can pass. So. I'm just ranting over here. Yeah. Literally, our flight is in like six hours. Yeah. But this is what it's all about: not knowing what you're getting yourself into. And trusting. <laughs> and those last okay. minute trips to REI. Yeah. As soon as we started to look into what it would take to actually get there, that's when we started to question whether it was even a good idea. We're basically gonna be trekking four days through the jungle without phone service, walking apparently a marathon every day, blazing hot. And we're just at the brink of rainy season, which means that at any moment the weather could just switch on us. And totally underprepared. We've never hiked these distances ever in our lives before. I have no idea what gear we really need to be bringing. We don't know this guide who Perry has just met for basically a couple days. And we're bringing a bunch of creators that we've also never met who are trusting us in our preparation in this to just literally walk straight into the jungle. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a terrible idea. It just sounds like something you'd want to prepare for. And we had the whole squad here in the S house, and we are having all the gear. Last minute preps, and the flight 
leaves in about uh, two hours. So, lots to do. Given that we're very late and we need to get going with things quite fast, I'm gonna keep this short. I'd like to welcome everyone officially to the Yes House. Yep. This is a space that is built with the intention to bring the brightest minds of our generation to collaborate and work together. You guys are handpicked because you're human beings who have followed their own truth and as a result, got to create something spectacular that inspires thousands of people all around. And it's such an honor to have every single one of you here today joining us on this trip. This is not a production. This is an actual adventure that we're all gonna go on, going in, realizing the risks that we're stepping into, the, un the unknown of going into a jungle and uh, not knowing what's, what we're gonna be facing there. But the best part is uh, we're doing it together. And everybody, I think, is on the same page. Johnny? No, are we? <laughs> I'm game, I'm game, baby. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, I, I, I plan to give you guys the context of, of, of what, what story are we trying to tell and, and where, where it begins, uh, because there's definitely a history of attempts to climb pyramids. Given the time constraints, we'll just do that as we go. All right, the team is out and I think we've got everything. Let's go. Terminal two, please. We gotta be quick. And we're now boarding the flight to Guatemala, heading to the jungle. Hello. Hi. This is the biggest team we've ever had and the most amount of gear we've ever worked with. All right, let's fly. Oh my god! Welcome to Guatemala! Bienvenido. Hey, John. Nice to meet you. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. What about you guys? Ready? Oh, we're so pumped. We're so excited. Max climbed Mount uh, Kilimanjaro in San Andreas. What? And, the, and these ones? He's out of ones, yeah. <laughs> Sam will not be allowed to take a shirt off throughout the whole trip. <laughs> I'll just wear a sweater. <laughs> just that sweater the whole wear time. A sleeping bag. Yeah. You too, Andreas. Enough of your muscles. Enough of my muscles? Here we go. <laughs> There's so many filmmakers on this trip that every two seconds we're stopping and getting shots. It's actually it's kind of nice because you stop and appreciate this, you know, rather than just driving through everything. Back is destroyed. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was sitting on the worst seat too. We started traveling 24 hours ago and uh, we're finally at the island, which is just the starting point for where we're gonna start the, the journey tomorrow. So we, again, we do a four hour drive and then we get to the beginning of the trek. Oh, Andreas with the red on. Yeah. yeah. We're arriving at our hotel. We'll stay at overnight and then we're waking up at what time tomorrow? 5 a.m. We wake up at 5 or we leave? No, we leave at 5, so we have to wake, I don't know how long you take to get ready, 4, 4.30? Amazing. We should put all the snores together. <laughs> Wait, Andres, does Max snore? You slept with him in... Uh, yeah, I think so. No, I don't snore, I talk in my sleep. I talk... It's only an hour, so you won't really be able to understand it. Do you actually snore? I don't think so. I don't know. I love how nobody trusts each other anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Max, do you f 
fucking snore. <laughs> I feel we should take all the mattress off and put them in the middle of the floor and have a big sleepover. Absolutely not. have been confusing modern civilizations since we found them. We don't know how the ancient civilizations built these, and so there's so much mystery around them. So I'm personally stoked to just be going on our first real Indiana Jones adventure for Amar to be accomplishing one of his biggest dreams, and for all of us to just have the journey of a lifetime. So, let's just see where it goes. Battery? That sounds like battery's dead. Shit. <laughs> we are stuck in a Burger King parking lot. Can't get the car to go. Pushy, pushy car? Maybe? Here we are getting pushed right now. <laughs> Was that the engine starting? Yes! Yeah. Good job, boy. Well done, team. Well done. Thank you. Started the four hour drive and the road has turned into a roller coaster. We have a good few hours more of this. Everybody's been trying to nap on this bus, but unsuccessful attempts so far. Just checked our phones and we are officially off the grid. No one's got any service. Do you have service? Hello? Hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Very few people make it out all the way out in the middle of where we're going. But I guess that's what the adventure is about. This is the last frontier of civilization in Guatemala. Starting from this point, we start walking. It's literally like, there's no more humans past this point. This is called the caracol. It represents, you know, the, the sound to call our ancestors, you know, to have the connection with them. And we are sure that they are come to help us. We are going to pray. Is this it? This is the beginning? Yes. We have just begun. Ready, yeah. team? Ready? Yeah, boy. Well, we've started the 100 mile hike into the Guatemalan jungle. It's not too dense right now, but we've been told it's kind of got an awful lot more dense. We're excited. Day one in search of the world's biggest pyramid. Yep. We have arrived in what officially looks like the Guatemalan jungle. This is exactly what I was hoping for.
Kelsey was asking me earlier, why'd you guys decide to bring all these people along rather than just going amongst yourselves? I mean, one aspect of it is this is an opportunity for us to, to kind of bring other creators into our world and, and create something different with new cinematography, new cameras, new gear. At the end of the day, when you look around, and you smile and you crack a joke and you have dinner together, there's like a very deep layer of bonding that you can only achieve when you experience things like this. I think a huge part of this trip isn't just going to this pyramid, but it's doing it with a whole group of people that we've been wanting to get to know for a while and creating that friendship, creating that bond, and then creating something incredible together. Like, I see a branch moving. Wow. What is it? It sounds like we're in Jurassic Park right now. It's so crazy to see Johnny just plugged in. What, what did you want to be when you grow up? I've always been intrigued by flight, so like a fighter jet pilot, something crazy. The dreams and goals kind of fade over time, but totally reignited with these things. These are sick and it hasn't gotten old. I've been doing it for five years and it's still fire. It's still, you know, gets my heart pumping. So, so when you put the goggles on, do you feel like you're in another world? Um, yeah, 100%. I saw this one video someone took when I was filming some cars. The most hectic situation ever. And there was a clip where he panned to me and I'm just like sitting there in my zone, headset on. It's like, it's weird. It's a totally mm. complete contrast and um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. This is the main path to go to this pyramid. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. We're definitely on a more foresty path now. Half of the time you can't really make out if you're going the right way. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes it very interesting when we have people scattered and going off on their own and in different groups and stuff. Well, there's uh, clearly two ways to go. What is this? Where are we? At the Tintal campsite. Tintal campsite? The Tintal campsite is okay. where we are going to spend the night. Okay. Uh, welcome, Tomas. Tomas. We arrived 10 minutes ago. Um, just checked the GPS. We walked 13 miles today. We've got a lot more to go. I'm realizing the extent of how small my hiking experience really is. We're actually staying at a campsite where all the archaeologists stay when they come to do studies on all the uh, pyramids. And uh, yeah, we're starting the day tomorrow at 4 a.m. for sunrise. I guess you guys don't have really background. Too. I, I think I told Prezi a little bit in the in the bus, but uh, the first the first dream I ever had, I ever remember having as a child, was when I was five and I visited the pyramid with my dad for the first time. I remember just like the scene was just like pointed up. I was like, I want to go up there, and then my dad said, I can't. And I said, Why? It's because he said you just can't. And that was the first time, just like my conscious mind remembers being like, oh, I, I'm going to do that. I'm actually in Egypt right now. This is where I was born and raised, and I'm very excited to be here after an entire year of not seeing my family. Maybe five years ago, this place used to be packed with tourists, but 
unfortunately not anymore. After the revolution, tourism took a big hit. Volleys of rubber bullets and tear gas fired at protesters. So that's why if you ever have a chance to come visit Egypt, you should definitely come. And you should hit me up. I will be your personal tour guide. I'd love to do that. In my mind, I just put the pieces together where I would approach the Egyptian government, basically pitch them the idea of letting me achieve a childhood dream along with my co-founder, Oscar, who's, who's American, to show the world that Egypt was safe and to show the world that the government actually cares about making sure that tourists are welcome. I had been telling my dad about it and he ended up setting me up with a friend who he said, if there's one person that will give you the definitive answer on whether this is gonna happen or not, it was this guy. So I drove to Cairo to meet this guy and within like three minutes, he was like, oh, forget about it. This will never happen. And then the following day, I was in the car at 6 a.m driving back to Cairo. And I remember the first government office that I went to, there was a woman like all the way in the back that smiled at me and I just went straight to her. I told her the whole story. She laughed so hard. <laughs> I think towards the end, she felt kind of bad for me and she referred me to her friend that worked at the Ministry of Tourism. And within 10 days, I was talking to the Minister of Tourism who was really supportive of the idea. The Minister of Tourism ended up contacting the Minister of Antiquities. And all of a sudden, 39 days later, that thing that I was made fun of every time I pitched it became this big stunt that now the government is supporting. I end up getting a phone call from my contact at the Ministry of Antiquities. Okay, one second. And the guy goes, Amar, where are you? You guys are climbing tomorrow. Now we just need to put all the pieces together. I just end up immediately getting on a bus ride to Cairo. Ladies and gentlemen, we just came out of the Supreme Council of Antiquities and we got the paper officially climbing the pyramids. It's been a journey. We got our signatures it's on it. It's been a dream, man. <laughs> it's been a dream, but we're climbing tomorrow, baby. And then the following day, the head of security was so against it. This one man, he literally said that over my dead body will you touch a stone in the pyramid. At that point, I just realized that it wasn't really about technicalities. It was more about ego. That summer, the whole government just got shuffled and my paperwork was just useless. This is the other crazy part. I met Thomas during this week, four years ago. And, uh, and that was obviously a huge life moment where I like, changed my entire life path to be pursuing what I'm, what I'm doing today. And the story that I, the first story that I shared with him was that story of being able to get that permit. Um, and then that's the first story that he shared with Matt. The two of us just had this flow started making videos together and like, oh wow, we're maybe now in a better position to pitch this to the government. We did two different rounds of pitching. The first one didn't work because a lot of complications and the second one was actually on my last visit to go home. Made one last attempt and it, and it didn't work and now I actually, I'm not able to go back to Egypt for five more years until I'm 30 years old because if I would go back, I would be held back by the military and not be allowed to travel. I just remember that moment with my dad and had a very like visceral experience of it, of just like the idea of like what I'm doing right now is actually exactly that vision. Maybe not the same place, but the same idea. Let's get up for sunrise. Perry, mm. let's get up for sunrise. Mm -mm. Thomas. You gotta get up. I know. How are you feeling today, baby? Huh? How are you feeling? It's <laughs> great. Come on. Oh, it's so bright. Perry. <laughs> we gotta get up for sunrise. <laughs> Buenos dias, alegría. Do you want to tell me what, what we're doing? So, we've woken up um, 4.30 to get up to walk to a smaller temple. It was our first night sleeping on pretty much on floor mats on the ground, so it'll be interesting to see <laughs> how people slept and the morale this morning is. There's been a couple of people picking up a few little sores, injuries on feet and stuff like that, so it's going to be interesting to see how, how the legs and the feet hold up over the next few days.
think we can expect a lot of trekking. <laughs> uh, I think I'm correct on that front. 35 kilometers today of a trek until we reach the base of El Mirador campsite. Lots of unknown adventures to be had. It's like, what is it, seven in the morning and it's already super hot out? A lot of people were complaining yesterday about their feet hurting. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens after a full marathon of walking today. I don't think any of us are really used to walking these distances. If we did it, this without backpacks, it would have been a lot easier. But right now I had like batteries, memory cards, red camera. The heat is hitting us hard right now. I'm just so exhausted. You have this moment of just having to ignore what your body's telling you and just continuing to walk. It comes down to you having the willpower to push your body past the pain. How are so, we doing up here? We are questioning whether we're gonna make it. <laughs> Super humid out. Yeah. Ah. Is that bad? Wait, let me zoom in on it. Hold it there. This what the f to be super careful. careful. Wait, wait, this let me have a look at that. Because <laughs> what the f It is going to be humid and then you're going to have problems to continue walking. I'm just really struggling with the heat. Like I've never really experienced this much heat for so long. And I think like my body is... Like knows how to handle this. 48 hours without, um, Water. um, there's ants here, damn it, uh, I'm gonna make this quick, there's been 48 hours without internet, uh, honestly I don't even know if there's like a world out there anymore, my uh, girlfriend might have forgotten me, and <laughs> who knows, yeah, so if you find this mom, uh, I love you, Okay. You guys are troopers. You're doing this sick. Yeah, so Chelsea and I have been sick for the past three days. Yeah, Chelsea was coughing all night. I feel like I had a pretty bad fever. It was intense. And my heels are eating themselves. They're eating themselves. And you're coming on like the distance or? I'm exhausted. But it's also just a combination of very little sleep because of how hot and humid it is outside. I slept probably 30 minutes yesterday. Dude, we're so loopy right now. When I was walking back, I've never, I, that's one of the dizziest that I had ever felt. No, wow, that that was, I was actually for a second there kind of worried. And I'm starting to understand that this is going to be very mentally straining because it's long and it's only been, I think, 24 hours since we started this whole thing. Everybody's exhausted, but here we go again. Thomas is about to photograph some birds. Get it. All right, look like a fing bird whisperer. I'm hike in the front. <laughs> it is the fi final hour of the day. Gotta say, my feet are kind of on fire. We started at 5 a.m. this morning and it is now 5 p.m. That makes it 12 hours. <laughs> that makes it 12 hours of hiking. Who does that? It's so insane just walking through here and seeing basically big piles of dirt and rock. I mean, it almost seems far-fetched to think that there's anything underneath this, but they're slowly uncovering all these insanely elaborate structures. It's just mind-blowing to me. It looks just like regular rock but when you like really take a look you can tell there's like naturally built steps like on this one right here they've been swallowed by nature so i guess only the biggest pyramids and temples have really stood the test of time oh my god no way wow that is this is the first sizable mayan structure we see I can't even imagine what the big one is going to be there. This is unbelievable. Yeah. So people lived here? Yes. It's crazy. We're in the middle of 
fucking nowhere. What percentage of the city do you think has been discovered? Oh, probably only like 2% of it, you know? There's so much to yet to be found. About to go inside our first mine structure. Were they just tiny or what? Yeah. Hey, Max, this is absolutely insane. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, man. That's so tight. We're in the middle of a mine structure that is in the middle of the jungle in Guatemala. And this is where they bury people. Smells like ass. I can barely, my shoulders barely fit through. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. No freaking way. You can stand up in here. So apparently this tree that's holding the entire base together is 2,000 years old. Whoa! Oh, f holy no. F no. Oh my god. What's happened? There's a huge spider. <laughs> it's one of those scorpion spiders. Dude! We're gonna have to find another way out. Oh god! Whoa! <laughs> wow. Oh, it's the last time I go into a hole. I don't know what's in there. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. This is insane. Holy. Wow. It's always weird imagining the people that used to live here, you know, just so long gone, thousands of years ago, and we're here now, and it's just covered by forests. Straight out of Indiana Jones right now. I'm just viewing so many things. <laughs> well, in the beginning, we didn't know too much about Amar's family and where he came from. They were just so frustrated by his choices. I mean, he had a full ride scholarship to like a good school in Canada, and he was willing to let that go. To go start a YouTube channel didn't make any sense. You essentially are the reason he dropped out of school. You're the reason he's not going back home. You almost feel like you're the reason his, uh, that his, I mean, that his father disowned him. The moment that scared me the most since we started this project just happened last night. Every part of this journey has been has been divine and I feel supported in the most supernatural way so I, I know that what we stand for and the purpose that we're bringing to this world is is gonna be just worth just making the hardest decision I've ever had to make. My phone vibrated. I pulled it out and there's this long Facebook message from my dad. I want my son Omar back. Leave this evil and perverted group of yours and find another job or come back to Egypt immediately. If you don't do that, then I won't accept you as my son or in my life at all for that matter. You've caused so much harm for your family and relatives. Shame on you. I won't accept any other outcome except for what I stated above. He thought that this stance would get me to change my mind. And as hurtful as the things that he mentioned the letter were, I knew that every word that he said was just out of his deep need and desire to protect me and to do anything he can in his powers to divert that path. 
I simply know that I cannot be the only one stuck in this position and there's someone out there who needs to hear this. Someone who's had their dreams rejected by those they love the most. And I just know how painful it is to live through that experience. So I want you to know that you're not alone. And as long as you're letting purpose steer your life forward, then know that every bit of pain that we go through is just an inevitable component to any success we want to accomplish. Be who you are and walk freely. Was it a hard decision to release that video? It was the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Because I knew that there would, there was no coming back from that decision. It'd be an act of defiance to him, which is something that you're not, you just do not do in my culture. You do not defy your father. Egyptian friends that live here came by and were trying to convince him to take it down and he just held his ground and ended up reaching just a, uh, a breaking point where he stood up and made a point that this video is for every single person who isn't accepted for who they are and who isn't able to dream and do the things that they actually want to be doing. It's like you f feel an overwhelming sense of responsibility to make sure that whatever happens, his dreams can come true. Because if he's gonna sacrifice everything, if he's gonna sacrifice not seeing his family, if he's gonna sacrifice not going home, if he's gonna sacrifice being disowned by his dad, you essentially become the surrogate father or sibling, you know? You become everything to each other once that kind of stuff happens. My mind just cut back for a second to just, to the moment I, I shared with my dad, which is where this whole dream just come, you know, started. And then just thought of him and I missed him a lot. I was just trying to channel as much as I could to him, just let him know that I'm thinking about him and I love him and I'm always praying for him. Just thinking about you too, man. I miss him a lot. <laughs> Somehow, the dream came true. Not the way I imagined it, but... I've never felt more blessed, I've never felt happier, I've never felt stronger in my mind. I'm glad you're getting to experience this. Same. With you guys, it's the best part. <laughs> Four years ago, it would have been on my own. This is so much better. Okay, I got it. I got it. Oh my! It's a fucking mouse, dude. Oh, no, no, don't kill it. Don't kill it. No, 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 no. Don't kill it. <laughs> don't you fucking dare! I will oh, punch you. I will <laughs> punch you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you broke it. <laughs> Guess where are you? You're sleeping tonight, honey. Oh no no! Literally just fix it. You're welcome. Did you go? Did you? <sighs> no! It's coming undone. It's coming undone. It came undone. No. Yes, yeah. it did. Look. No. Just put your finger. Like, <laughs> fix it's it. It's fine. It's fine. No. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this surreal is packed in so tight. <laughs> I hate cockroaches. <laughs>
book and just dot at the end of that sentence and be like, this chapter of our lives is over, of searching for this, this ancient structure and being on top of it and witnessing what that's like. Like now we can breathe and continue with our lives and learn from that. Um, I think it's really exciting to, to close off this chapter with everybody here. So I'm excited. Discomfort is the greatest way to build friendships. It's how our friendship was born. So to be able to share this experience all together has been very rewarding. And we still have a few more days ahead of us, but just like being 20 minutes away from going in the pyramid with all of you guys is, is, has been a surreal experience. So I'm very excited to like continue conversations and, and share this moment together. And I'm very grateful that you all said yes to this experience. This is the final stretch of this 100 kilometer trek that we started three days ago. Let's just have a meditative walk where you kind of tune in to yourself and think about just your life and again how you end up here and uh, I swear when we arrive there we have all that present and we can actually celebrate the moment with with depth and intensity because it's it's a pretty big deal what we're about to do. All right, the moment's come. We're going to La Danta. La Danta. at the very, very bottom base of the pyramid. So these are just the steps to get to the platform which all of the pyramids are on. We're just starting to see all this. And look at how big all the stairs are. Like downtown Los Angeles, size of the base of the pyramid. Wait, the base of the pyramid is the size of downtown Los Angeles? Yeah. What? You can do it! Wow. You would never guess just walking through here, but this entire thing is limestone underneath this. limestone. And this is part of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so these are the steps to the second platform and this entire thing that we're on is man-built so once they started digging up the soil from what's been like layered on top of this over thousands of years they're actually discovering the giant construction and the insane labor that it was to build this San Andres you guys are gonna beat us out there and just give us the go awesome okay all right this is gonna be epic yeah I'm excited all right, sweet. So we're at the first set of stairs. Apparently the top is still like about 50 minute walk. So we're gonna keep moving, but you guys always stay ahead of us. This is just steps oh up. my lord. What? <laughs> Can't even see the top from here. Wow. This is, is, this is way bigger than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. These are, this is not even the pyramid or like the, the main part of it. You can't even grasp it fully in your mind how this huge was, this must have looked when it was for real, you know? So we're in position right now. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. You guys are going to freak out. So are we good to go up? Yeah, you guys are good. All right, guys, the moment is upon us. We're actually doing it. Got chills right now. Whoa! Oh my god. Officially climbing the pyramids. Now we just need to put all the pieces together. Through all this like pain and it makes me just so much more upset. I want to love you. There's this big thing that I have to work for and I, and I just always hold me accountable to this dream. And the moment when it comes down to me leaving and needing every bit of support that will just help me bear the thought that I'm not going to be able to be home. This is for every kid out there to dream the wildest they can, to dream the biggest they can.
if you are here for some reason, you know, nobody comes here just for fun. You know, it's difficult, you know, it's not, you know, not easy, but if you have that connection, everything is, com comes, you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What does yes theory have to do with dreams? Everything. The yes theory is saying yes to those dreams that you think are so far-fetched. It's being constantly in the pursuit to go after those dreams, to go after the things that just like matter the most to you in life. As you're in the pursuit to do something you love and to do something that you dream of, you never know who that inspires or what that ends up contributing to your life. Because sometimes we end up achieving the dreams we never even knew we had. And that's the most beautiful part about being in the pursuit.